way. That was left out of any of the clips posted of her speech and touted on Fox News. What is not really that interesting about this whole situation is the fact that Fox News is doing this. This is what Fox News does. This is how they are different from other news organizations. This is why the White House argued months ago that Fox should be treated as a media organization, but not as a normal news organization, because they don't treat news the way a normal news organization treats news. Just like the fake acorn controversy, Fox News knows that it has a role in this dance. That's not new. That's not actually even interesting about this scandal. Fox does what Fox does. That is dog bites man. That is not interesting. What is interesting about this story is that the Obama administration inexplicably keeps falling for it. Today, Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack acknowledged that he asked for and accepted Shirley Sherrod's resignation after this supposed controversy came to light on Fox News. But apparently before anyone but Fox News and a conservative website got their say about what actually happened here. Dear White House, dear administration, believing conservative spin about what's so wrong with you and then giving into that spin is not an effective defense against that spin. Just buying it and ap- apologizing for it and, and doing whatever they want you to do doesn't make the problem of them lying about you go away. In fact, it makes it worse. After Fox News set its sights on Obama administration official Van Jones, Van Jones was very quickly booted out of his job. After Fox News went on this fake crusade against ACORN, the Obama administration cut all ties with the group, didn't even bother to mount a defense or wait till they had been investigated properly, just let Fox News do it. They pushed an effort to defund ACORN. And now, after Fox News totally misrepresented USDA employee Shirley Sherrod, she's cut loose as well before the story can even make it into the mainstream media. If you keep falling for this sort of stunt, you are encouraging them. You are feeding a dog from the table and thereby encouraging that dog to beg at the table. After all the damage was already done today, after Fox News managed to force out Shirley Sherrod with a totally out of context smear job that made white people feel aggrieved about racism in a way that helps Fox News' politics, here's how Fox News decided to cover the end of this story. Did the White House essentially railroad an innocent woman in this because they are on edge themselves about the Van Jones controversy, the Black Panthers Party case, and other controversies? She was railroaded. Given how the Obama administration has reacted to previous cooked-up campaigns by Fox News and conservative activists, it was not impossible to see this coming. So I say again tonight, as I said back in April... The huge tide of negative publicity that followed these videotapes and the coverage they got on Fox wall-to-wall was a dishonest political stunt that bears no resemblance to journalism and no resemblance to the actual facts of what happened. But it worked. Means be damned, in the end, it worked. Like I said in April, who do you think is next on their list? I asked it months ago, and I'm asking it again now. Who's next? It was at an NAACP Freedom Fund dinner that Shirley Sherrod told her story about working with white farmers to protect them from bankruptcy. In the heat of today's totally contrived right-wing maelstrom over this, the NAACP took the bait. They condemned Ms. Sherrod's widely circulated but completely out-of-context comments about withholding assistance from white farmers. The organization called Ms. Sherrod's comments shameful. This afternoon, Ms. Sherrod was sharply critical of the NAACP for throwing her so fast and so hard under the proverbial bus. The NAACP has not tried to contact me one time, and they are the reason why this happened. They got into a fight with the the Tea Party, and all of this came out as a result of that. Your reaction to I would have appreciated, when you look at my history of civil rights, I would have appreciated having the the NAACP at least contact me, and Roland Martin, too, contact me to try to get the truth about what happened. After the story's full context and the meaning of Ms. Sherrod's comments came to light, NAACP President and CEO Benjamin Jealous issued another statement, a remarkable statement. It read in part, quote, With regard to the initial media coverage of the resignation of USDA official Shirley Sherrod, we have come to the conclusion 
that we were snookered by Fox News and Tea Party activist Andrew Breitbart into believing she had harmed white farmers because of racial bias. Having reviewed the full tape, spoken to Ms. Sherrod, and most importantly, heard the testimony of the white farmers mentioned in this story, we now believe the organization that edited the documents did so with the intention of deceiving millions of Americans. Joining us now is the president and CEO of the NAACP, Benjamin Jealous. Mr. Jealous, thanks very much for being here. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, Rachel. So your statement this afternoon indicated that you had spoken uh, with, with Shirley Sherrod. What, what did you say to her? How did, how did that conversation go? Sure. Yeah, I said that, I, that uh, we were very sorry. My staff had already spoken to her. I had spoken to Secretary Vilsack. We had spoken to people who knew her and even some friends in common. You know, we, 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 we dug down deep into this, and it looked, you know, and most importantly, we got the full audio. And now we have the full video that all can see up at NAACP.org. And when you compare what Mr. Breitbart was pushing to what she actually said, it is startling. You know, we're forced in this line of work to make quick judgments about video evidence and video testimony all the time. It happens, comes up a lot in um cases involving the cops and, you know, allegations of mistreatment. Sometimes we comment, sometimes we don't. This one we kept playing over and over, and it seemed uh, that she had withheld um, help from, from people be, because of the race. We saw people laughing. We were very sensitive. It was at our event. And so we, we got out a statement in the wee hours of the morning, um, just to be very clear that we, you know, that we have a zero tolerance policy for racism. We believe civil human rights should be judged by a single yardstick. But when we dug deep and we got access to things that we could not get access to late last night, we realized that this evidence had been cut and sliced and diced in ways that were intentional uh, and, you know, deeply, deeply troubling. And that a, a good person had been wronged. Yeah, and, we, you know, first and foremost, we, we believe in the truth. And, and, and so we went right out there and said... You know, we made a mistake here. Uh, we have a very good batting average. You know, it is near a thousand, but sometimes we make a mistake, and we and we made one here. And we thought it was important to reach out to her to apologize, to talk to her about the statement we were about to release, uh, and then to get that statement out there as quickly as possible. When you watch the full tape, when you consider her remarks in context, when you look at them uh, in a more holistic way than the way they were chopped up and edited to be shown on Fox News. What do you think the point was that she was making with that anecdote about her initial discomfort with the prospect of helping this white couple? Well, first and foremost, she goes on to talk about how she helped them. And as they said, you know, she helped them save the farm and they're deeply grateful to her. But most importantly, I think to the country at this moment, when people feel so torn asunder by the climate in the country, by the antics of some of the parties we've talked about, this was a story of transformation. It was a story of healing. It was a story about a woman whose father had been uh, killed by a Klansman, uh, um, learning to how to traverse old lines in a, in a, in a deep south town and, 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 and county, and ultimately realize that we're all in this together, that we are one nation. And, and that was the message. It was a message about pulling this country back together. It's a message that's integral to the NAACP, the work that we're doing right now, the One Nation campaign us planning for this big march on Washington on 10 to 10 to demonstrate to the country that the majority of this country still believes in hope, still believes that we can work together, still believes that more than anything else in tough times, you've got to pull together, not let yourself be torn apart. It seems to me, Ben, that it's clear that... Um Somebody was going through NAACP event videos specifically because of what else is going on with the NAACP in politics right now. Um, the issue that, uh, that, that your organization has raised with uh, elements of racism within the Tea Party movement. Uh, Mr. Breitbart, who is the activist who posted this initially, specifically cited that as sort of his justification for promoting this, wanting the NAACP to be seen as a racist organization. Do you think there is an extent to which... Um, you've been targeted. Your organization has been certainly. singled out here in order to make a broader political point and undermine what you do? Oh, certainly, certainly. I mean, we have, we have had quite a week and a half, and we're eager to get back to the big issues of jobs and fixing schools and pulling this country back together. We've received over 100 death threats. I've had to sit down and cancel 19-year-old interns, about, you know, talk to them about when I, you know, the first time I received death threats when I was a 20-year-old organizer in Mississippi. 
um, and, and counsel them through them. Uh, you know, we've had uh, somebody was just actually picked up today in Florida for saying that they were a Klansman and, and, and threatening the, the lives of NAACP members. And in the midst of this, we've seen lie out of lie after lie come out of Fox News and come out of, you know, come from Sarah Palin. For instance, you know, she funny, she said it was a false argument, the NAACP claiming uh, that um, the Tea Party was racist. And she was right. I mean, it was like Freudian on, on, on her part. It is a false argument. We never made that argument. We said and we still say that you got serious white supremacist and racist elements in your ranks. You have the Council of Conservative Citizens. You have Stormfront.org. We've been researching this for months. We know what we're talking about. And that's why you guys imploded last week. And Mark Williams, you know, just came all out of his skull. And you had to throw out the entire Tea Party Express. And now you're stumbling, saying, you know, uh, uh, well, they never belonged in the first place. Well, golly gee, how can you throw them out? They didn't belong in the first place. So, you know, clearly, look, they got their, you know, dander up. Um, they were caught you know, um, flat-footed by their own member. They got serious problems.